Right, it's been a little while since I recorded a video where I was throwing and talking, so hopefully I'm still able to do it. Um, today I'm just throwing little gift tumblers, um, and actually since recording the last one of these videos, which is, it was a while ago, I've done a few blog posts, and one of them was based on a series of questions I did in my Instagram stories about sending out gifts with um, orders of ceramic pieces and what people wanted and what people thought. Um, and the answers weren't as clear cut as I was expecting. Um, I'll link the blog post in the description, but uh, I was expecting it to be universally popular and there was at least a reasonable amount of people who either didn't like gifts at all or were very specific about what sort of gifts um, they considered acceptable and which would detract from um, their experience of buying from someone so if you're interested in that go check that out but basically they're just little tumblers I don't really weigh the clay it's about 150 grams and I just throw them they fit inside mugs but that's all explained more in the blog post anyway the point the main point of this uh, video is that I have set up a patreon page now this is YouTube so you're probably more than familiar with a patreon and the concept behind it um, but basically it's a way uh, consumers of content can directly fund the creation of content by paying a small amount a month to a creator and it's really important for things like YouTube accounts and podcasters because a lot of the time the financial returns on making something like that um, aren't livable or at least aren't livable if you're making well-researched, educational, thoughtful content. Certain types of content can be hugely profitable and then other types take too much work with too small an audience for it to be viable just based on the AdSense or um, whatever the equivalent is for podcasting, like the ad revenue from it. So what it lets you do is you can pay the creator almost directly through uh, Patreon um, and they take a cut of it but most of the money goes to the creator uh, monthly or there is an option to do it per bit of content that they put out but I think it's generally done monthly and what it means is that the creator isn't um, kind of beholden to AdSense revenue which can be quite variable and fickle and often just not enough to live on they can create the content that the audience wants to see rather than whatever's most popular um, the audience get what they want the creator is able to make it i've seen it done successfully uh, with youtube accounts that i follow glazy has a patreon um, which i subscribe to because derek does such great work with that website and so on and so forth. It's basically a great way to support creation of things where the alternative is potentially ruining the thing. Um, like if Glazy was covered in ads, it would not be anywhere near as nice a website. I'd much rather pay Derek for his time that way. Um, I've thought about it with regards to my, uh, my video content and my educational video content more to the point because I do some videos on here will be educational some are just kind of process or um, just oddly satisfying type videos but I do some that are far more niche and educational and they you know tend to have a much smaller appeal um, uh, but because it's only a small part of what I create, that's not how I make my money. It's never kind of, doesn't really work in the way that it would for most educational content providers. The way I make my money is through making and selling pots. This is sort of something that I do because, you know, I, I learn almost entirely from people putting content up for free on the internet. That's how I learned to throw, um, that's how I learned the main kind of that's how I got started in glaze making at least I've kind of taken the ceramic materials workshop course since then 
but um, yeah it was free content that let me get started and I learned a lot and then I figured out quite a lot as I've gone um, so I'm happy to be in a position where I can put that out and kind of give back to people who might just be starting and might not know some of the things even though the obviously the content I learned from is still out there but you've got to find it so I, I enjoy being able to pass that on and it's been a part of what I've done since I knew enough to warrant telling anyone anything um, but it is not financially rewarding in any way and I put this in the blog post concerning this which I will also link in the description um, but the the finances of making educational content the way that I do it without kind of monetizing it is obviously I don't get paid for my blog posts I don't get paid for anything that I put up on Instagram and so the only thing that I get in any way paid for are my YouTube videos and a, a typical amount for a half hour video like this where I throw and talk I might get two to five pounds for that video so when you add in editing and um, everything else that goes into recording and uploading a video it's not a very good hourly return which is why I've always done it like this where I'm going to be stood at this wheel for half an hour uh, I might as well talk at the same time now a recurring comment that I've got on these videos is that it's hard to hear me over the wheel and ideally I have made a change to improve that for this video which hopefully you can tell which is basically I've, I've at various points I've bought external microphones for my camera in the hope that that one would do a better job of filtering out the wheel noise and so far none of them have done a great job um, but one thing I hadn't tried until now is I have literally stuck the uh, mic on its own stand much nearer me than the wheel rather than having it on the camera which is what it's designed for um, just because now I'm talking to the microphone and the, the motor is underneath the wheel and ever so slightly shielded from the microphone. So hopefully my speech is coming through a bit better on this one. <coughs> but you still have the problem that I'm slightly distracted from throwing and um, there is that background noise. What I would ideally do is record the throwing video separately and then narrate over it, which I believe is what Florian Gatsby does. Um, but he said, certainly on one of his videos, I think he said that he'll record the audio multiple times and then edit that down. So you're talking about a couple of hours for half an hour of narration just because you've got to record it a few times and then edit it and then add it to a video which he's obviously editing down as well. So it is a not insignificant amount of time. And the problem is when you're not getting a financial return from it, you're that step up in quality comes at the cost of time but doesn't have any immediate payout now obviously Florian's content has gone uh, incredibly well and I suspect his AdSense is now probably paying him for the time that he takes to do it um, and maybe mine could if I also took that much time it's sort of you put that investment in and find out whether or not it works currently my AdSense is minimal and um, you know, nothing else pays. Instagram don't offer me anything. And I don't mind that. That's fine. I, but it does mean there's no incentive to take an extra couple of hours. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have a toddler, um, three years old now. But obviously for the last few years, it's been a case of any time that I spend on something like this is time that I'm not spending with him and you know a small amount of time I don't mind but I it's been a priority for me to kind of have that work-life balance and I can maintain that but the cost is uh, a slightly lower quality of audio which is you know most of you can hear this okay um, 
the automatic captions have always been able to understand what I've been saying. So I kind of tune that as a sign that um, at the very least, even if you can't understand a word I'm saying, you can turn on the captions and the captions will tell you. So it can't be that unintelligible. But um, all of that is to say that I'd kind of ruled out uh, a Patreon on the basis that I didn't think there would be enough demand for it to warrant trying to create entirely new content because you run into the same problem of if you've committed now taken money off people to create new content you're looking at a few hours to make a video <clears throat> potentially you've committed to making entirely new content so now you've got to find a subject that you haven't covered in your free videos make entirely new content taking a couple of hours over it and unless you've got um, enough subscribers to your patreon to make that worthwhile you're now even more committed to it than you would be just doing it up front like this is already a time sink but if I've promised it to people um, I'd hate the feeling of not being able to meet uh, a promise that I've made but also I'd hate that obligation if it was then proving difficult to meet it in a to a standard that I was happy with so that's why I haven't done one up until now <clears throat> what's changed is that I was talking to Becca at Five Lines who is setting up a, a Patreon and I don't hers isn't live yet but I think it will be um, launching fairly soon she's a production thrower at Graves Co and does the Wheel Talk podcast um, and she's going to be giving direct one-to-one -one feedback in her Patreon which is a very interesting thought. So if you're a, an intermediate potter looking to speed up your production, because obviously production throwers, she throws hundreds of pieces a day, um, and so efficiency is quite a big thing there. She's looking to have that as um, something that people can essentially commission from her to get feedback on where they can improve, particularly in terms of efficiency. Great idea. Um, I think that's gonna be in demand because there's a lot of people who want to get faster and more efficient at throwing um, and part of its practice but there are definitely a lot of people like me who have learnt entirely in isolation and no one's ever taught me in any significant way how to throw uh, other than watching YouTube videos and I have no idea what I'm doing it right sometimes I get told that um, when I centre the clay I do it backwards but you know that's the way I figured out how to do it it was comfortable maybe I could do better I don't know anyway that's what she's doing but I was talking to her about that and she said that I should do one and I said why I didn't think it was a good idea um, but her point was that if I'm making the content for free um, there are plenty of people who would be happy to continue getting the same content and pay you know two pounds a month or or something like that um, to make sure that the free content kept coming. Similar to me um, paying Derek at Glazy to just to make sure the website pays for itself. It doesn't become such a burden <coughs> for him that he stops because I love the website and I don't want it to go away. And there might be some people willing to do that for my content. But the good thing is without promising any additional content or promising any more demands on my time if there is no one or just a handful of people who wanted that from me um, it's no big deal because I was it's all stuff that I was doing anyway but it makes it that much easier to justify the time taken to record and edit these videos which is something I've been struggling to find for YouTube videos recently um, which you might have noticed because <coughs> I think it's probably been two months since I did a proper YouTube video which is the longest I'd taken off for a very long time and that's because of the 3D printing that I talked about in the last video um, that combined with learning uh, how to make my own throwable and casting clays and learning how to make the moulds and learning how to slip cast and trying to do 
all the kind of day-to-day -day pottery business and raising a toddler on top of that um, YouTube videos were the first thing to go where with a little bit of breathing room it would be that much I wouldn't have to take so many pottery orders a month there would be that little bit of extra time that I could set aside for educational content so that's the, that was her suggestion and it made perfect sense to me because you know I'm not committing to anything else I can put the content out people can subscribe or not but it doesn't actually matter I appreciate the support but equally if someone is just starting out in a pottery business particularly if they're hoping to make it into a business um, chances are they don't have a spare well anything really um, I know I certainly didn't at the beginning and that's why I learned everything for free but the people who can afford it will be paying to make sure that I'm still creating that content and anyone for whom it's too much of a stretch or you know what whatever the case is I know obviously it's a it's a difficult time at the moment and it's a very uncertain future but I just have that little bit extra of a buffer so that's the current plan the patreon is up there are multiple tiers starting from two pounds a month um, and going up I think the highest is 20 pounds a month but I'm it's one of those things where in theory if it becomes popular the 20 pounds a month one will then I'll be possibly making longer videos on specific topics as requested by higher tiers or <clears throat> the other idea that I liked quite a lot is I've been doing infographic posts for Instagram for about six months now um, which kind of work well for me because you know I used to be a graphic designer before I was a potter and so um, the actual the effort of creating the graphic part of it is fairly minimal um, and it's a good way of converting blog posts um, condensing them down and converting them into something that works well on Instagram um, and I can then convert those infographics into printable posters so you could have a poster on your studio wall about a specific topic and if I did that then those would be uh, like a reward for the higher tiers you get access to those to print them and every time I did an infographic I'd then also do a poster or something like that you know it gives me scope <coughs> to, to add some new things to the range of options that I have without having committed to it um, but at the kind of fundamental level if everyone who enjoyed this content and felt that they wanted to gave two pounds a month that would easily cover the time it takes to do this sort of stuff um, and would mean that there would be no difficulty whatsoever in committing to it um, I do it because I want to but it does mean it's the first thing to go when I'm up against it and anyone who does pottery especially does a lot of pottery knows there are no guarantees so like a couple of years ago I had just a whole batch quarter ton of clay was different and wouldn't work and I was getting blistering and it was in the run-up to Christmas and when something like that happens that's pretty much it that's your all your time goes into re-throwing all the orders that you threw before you got any of the pieces fired and noticed the difference um, <clears throat> so it would be nice to have that time blocked out where even if something like that happened um, that didn't mean that things got completely dropped um, anyway all of that is just to say I now have Patreon it, there's no um, additional content on there the only reason the two reasons you might want to subscribe to it are to support this sort of content and make sure that um, more of it is produced in future and because <coughs> I do 
create the content over uh, a few different locations as in I have the blog posts, I have the YouTube videos, I have the Instagram infographics, I have recipes that I post to Glazy, um, that's pretty much it but I'm sure I'll think of something else later but there's all these kind of places where you'd have to, if you wanted to stay on top of everything you'd have to check out four different places yourself um, because I do add some of it to my mailing list but you know unless you're paying attention to everything I'm doing you might miss some of that oh the other thing to say is that even if you're following me on Instagram the problem of having these two different content types is that they get split out by the al well sorry they don't get split out by the algorithm it doesn't understand that there's a different group of people who want to engage with one type than the other and what that means is that the algorithm sees the educational posts rather than being as a different type of posts to the, the kind of the broader more satisfying ones it just sees them as being worse because fewer people that it showed them to think that they're worth engaging with so um, they generally have low reach and I understand why that is that's fine I don't particularly mind but it does mean that unless you've turned on notifications for my posts you're probably missing most of them it only shows them to kind of one two percent of my audience on Instagram unless it's one of the ones that goes a bit more viral when people share it but as a general rule my infographic posts on Instagram are not being shown to the number of people that follow me that would be interested <clears throat> because the algorithm doesn't understand that those people and that content aren't the same as would appreciate the other content so essentially I've got these different streams of content and there's a reasonable chance that even if you're following me on one of the platforms where I'm posting that type of content you might not see that part of my content because the algorithm on that platform will decide that it's not good content and can't be bothered to show you it. Um, if you subscribe to the Patreon that's where it's all going to go. So it's all going to be either shared directly there or linked there. Um, so you will get notified, you'll have them all in a single place, you can search through them based on tags, I'll tag everything um, and I think you can search through but <clears throat> certainly you'll get everything in filterable types um, and it will be all the different streams of content going into a single place um, and you'll be su supporting the creation of more of each of them and then at the higher levels um, I would definitely be interested in adding more new types of content or letting you have more of a say about what future videos are on because I mean I take suggestions for content already but um, there is I would definitely prioritize suggestions coming from someone who had supported that I knew had supported for a while and sometimes I recognize usernames there are people that have been following me pretty much since I started <clears throat> but in some cases I don't um, and that's just good to have that kind of when someone suggests something you know whether or not you're going to prioritize it based on that um, so that's kind of my my general thoughts on it uh, I will link to it um, in this video and I'll probably just add it to the, you, the the kind of default YouTube footer so it's in everything only subscribe if you want to and those things appeal to you I won't be shutting you out of content if you don't everything will still be available for free uh, apart from if I do start doing incredibly like if I'm doing longer videos that will have a very niche appeal but appeal just to the kind of people who want to pay £10 a month to have a two hour long video on something very boring that I'm interested in if someone else was interested in that then that is the sort of thing that I would be happy to stick up exclusively on Patreon just because I know that 
the majority of people wouldn't be interested in it anyway. But other than that, I'll still be putting everything out for free in the usual places. Um, I've waffled for long enough, but I haven't finished throwing the clay, which is why it's still going. So I will probably just call it quits there. Uh, all links for things that I've mentioned will be in the description. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think about this new audio because I can adjust it further. Um, this is one of the two mics that I bought. This is the cheaper one. I think the other one would be better, but it doesn't currently mount to the thing that I'm attaching this one to. So I'd have to make an adapter, which is what I haven't bothered. Um, but hopefully the dialogue came over clearer here. Um, and yeah, just let me know what you think about that, what direction you think this should go. And if you want to support the creation, the link's below and I, it will be greatly appreciated. So thank you.